Okay, there we go. Um, welcome. So tonight we have Lindsay Jamison Powell and Anna Schaefer teaching us about scent detection and nose work. Hi, ladies. And we have Carmen, your guest host, and I'm Robin. Yay. Um, thanks for being here. And we're going to go ahead and start with you, Lindsay. Lindsay, if you would please start by telling us who you are and where you're from and a little bit about yourself. Okay, so my name is Lindsay Jamison Powell. I actually live on Vancouver Island in Canada. Um, mm -hmm. I have my very first otter hound. She's five months. She was part of the Cinco de Mayo litter, and we're absolutely loving her. Um, we got interested in this breed because we do nose work. Um, we've been doing nose work. My husband and I have been doing nose work for about five or six years now, five years now and um, we now teach it. So um, we have, it's a fun, fun thing to do with your dogs. And um, we started off with uh, two, we'll call them mutts, mixed breeds. And then we were looking for our, a new dog because my husband's dog is getting to the point where he's working at an elite level. So we were looking for dogs to start at the next level and get going again and um, couldn't find what we were looking for. And then we found otter hounds and fell head over heels in love with them. And um, so uh, we're just starting to work with Eliza and uh, she's just working on basic uh, level, actually without any odor actually at this point, but just with treats because that's where you start with. That's her getting off the couch. So um, I did up a presentation um, and then Anna it sounds like she has some stuff to show so mm -hmm. um, about uh, nose work and all the different uh, uh, organizations that offer it so we'll, we'll go there. Sounds good. Okay so where are you? When did you first see an otter hound Lindsay? My girlfriend who has a PVGV <laughs> <laughs> uh, says if you like if you like uh, Irish wolfhounds you need to check this out because my husband doesn't like Irish wolfhounds and I really wanted an Irish wolfhound and so this was um, when I saw them and then really started doing some research about them I kind of went oh oh and then my husband kind of went oh oh and then we went and visited Diane Patterson in Oregon and hung out with her pack and by the time we came home from her place we were completely sold. <laughs> cool. So, so um, nose work is a whole bunch of different organizations. Um, NACSW is the very first organization that started the game. Um, Amy Hero, Ron Gott, and Jill, Mar Jill Marie O'Brien were the first three people who actually started the game. Um, and uh, Jill Marie, it was more because she was looking for, she was working a, in a shelter and she was looking for something to do with shelter dogs. And that's actually how the game started. Um, and it started because she used to be a um, bomb dog handler and trainer in the army. And same with Amy Hero. And Ron did a cadaver and drug dogs. And they all got together and started this game down in California. So that's where it came from. Um, and then um, AKC also plays the game and UKC, um, they play very similar. And then CWAGS is also in the States. And then the last two, SDDA and CKC are um, two Canadian uh, organizations in case we had any Canadians come on. Um, my husband and I personally compete in the NACSW, CWAGS, SDDA and CKC. Um, it may be something that we end up taking Eliza down to do um, confirmation down in the States. We might look into doing some AKC uh, nose work trials with her as well so that she can get that end of it too. So, but that's kind of where we're at. Okay, so uh, hopefully you can see this. I didn't realize how small it was going to be. So AKC, um, all the Americans organizations use the exact same uh, odor, first three odors. They all use birch as their first odor, then anise and clove. And then depending on what organization you're going with, there's cypress and that's CWAGS and uh, AKC. And then um, UKC uses myrrh and vetiver at their master level. Um, and then the main, the 
the three main um, or competitions that you do are container searches. And that's sort of like to emulate like people searching luggage or mail, same kind of principles. Um, it's also where you start with most dogs is doing container searches. Uh, and you start with open containers and then work to close containers. And then interior searches, exterior searches, and then depending on the organization, um, vehicle searches, which are a ton of fun to do. They're one of my favorite things to do. And then uh, buried searches is uh, buried slash water searches or AKC. Um, and then I'm not going to worry about the, I don't think, are there any Canadians besides myself on? Because I won't worry about them then. Okay. Um, hey, Bev Beering is going to be joining us, but she's not on the call yet. Okay. Seawags is mainly containers and interiors, and you can do fun things like. Yes. So, so I spoke her name, and there she is. There she is. So, um, and then in Canada, the big ones are CKC, SDDA is the, the really big one, and then CKC. And um, SDDA does containers, interiors, exteriors, slash vehicles, and then they have another component called games. So that's uh, theirs. And then CKC, we're a year in and they're in the middle of changing all the rules because they're a year in and they've, we've ran a year and now we're um, figuring out what works and what doesn't work. So they do containers, interiors, and exteriors. Um, most of the organizations, except for SDDA, we have uh, what they call warm-up boxes at trials. And the warm-up boxes are when you come, you, your dogs are, are allowed to, oh, and UKC doesn't have them either. Um, you have boxes with the odor in them and it just puts the, 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 what you're doing in context for the dog. So you can go and do a warm-up box and the dog goes, oh, right, that's what I'm doing. And they're also really good that if you do trial and you come out and it's really, you don't have a great successful time, you can come out and run those warm-up boxes again and and with some success with the dogs so um and I'm, then the, oh i'm sorry go ahead i'm going to interrupt <laughs> though before you go too far because i think a lot of our visitors tonight don't know what odor is so tell us what odor actually means how they put it on a kit and how many drops and that kind of thing if you would please so depending on who you train with is how it works I personally train with um, intro to nose work where we don't use odor to begin with. We use treats and we introduce all those containers, interiors, exteriors, um, and vehicles. We do it all with treats and all the fun things that you can do with nose work, we do with treats first. Um, just to build, because we have pet dogs and what we're trying to do is build, drive in those pet dogs. We're trying to teach them to be what, um, Bomb and drug and all those trained from puppyhood dogs, we're trying to teach them the same thing that they're doing, only our dogs come with a lot more, I'm not going to say baggage, but baggage, because we love them and we spoil them and we, you know, they also have obedience, so they're also told yes or no and they can do things, so this is a non-obedience game, you're not allowed to tell your dogs no. <laughs> unless they're doing something like digging up the hide. Um, odor is an essential oil um, and we put it on Q-tips and usually you get, uh, Anna's showing the essential oil and we put it on Q-tips and um, uh, I think I have, there we go, there's a yeah. whole kit of them. Mm -hmm. um, we put it on the, the Q-tips and then you put the Q-tips in what we call tins and the uh, silver thing on your screen is what we would call a tin. Tins come in many forms. That's just a, um, an example of a tin. I use um, electrical wiring covers quite frank, often or straws. Mm -hmm. um, chip bag closures are great. Yeah, there's a chip bag closure. I use those too. Um, yeah, centrifuge are awesome. Um, um, uh, lipstick containers. We drill holes in the top of the lipstick containers. Um, so if you can figure out how to put a Q-tip in there, we'll use it. Mm -hmm. It's to actually prevent the oil from getting on the surface. It's just a, a container to keep the q -tip. It's a vessel to keep the Q-tips, but still allow the odor to escape. Mm -hmm. uh, and you don't want to touch your Q-tips yeah. with your hands. That's why all your, 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 um, 
kits come with tweezers because you don't want it all over your hands. If it's all over your hands, then it can get all over everything else. Um, and 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 is being awesome. Yeah. And That's a nice one. I like that color. Yeah. <laughs> you went shopping, didn't you? No, I I keep a special one. <laughs> okay. And you, and you put how how many Q-tips do you put in yours? Two to three. Depending on what I'm doing and how old my Q-tips are. So if I'm wanting, you vary up the strength of your um, odor by the number of Q-tips you put in. Mm -hmm. Your instructor, most instructors, if they're really good instructors, will actually supply you with your first scent kit. Did that happen for you, Anna? Yes, yeah, she gave me about four or five, and that's correct, in silver. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So usually you're sent, they're all pre-scented for you. And then as you learn about it, then you'll learn about more about the, the scent, how mm -hmm. to put it together. But most instructors will give you a scent kit. Mm -hmm. I spend many hours putting them together for my students. Yeah, so, and here, um, here's just what, do you put like 50 Q-tips, half Q-tips in a jar when you do yeah. one? It depending upon what which one you're doing or something. Yes. Like that you I have about I have eight jars in my my garage, all full of different Q-tips, all labeled with the different odors in them, and then I have small little jars that I give out to my students. So I give them about ten to fifteen each student, um, and then a variety of different tins. Um, and then you want to make sure it's in a container that is sealed because you don't want to be smelling that odor because your dogs will be asking to play all the time because they'll smell the odor. So you actually want um, a sealable container. Yes, Carmen, you have a question. So uh, being a set word movie, um, when you say that the level of the number of kids that we put in the same is it kind of like a, you know, three of them in there, is it an old thing, or is it, you know, as they're newer, you put more sense so they can find it easier mm -hmm. Okay, so dogs' noses are awesome. We are the ones that with the crappy noses. So they don't need a ton of odor. When we're introducing scent to dogs, we actually put a tin in a box, an open box, and we give odor the value because they don't really care. <laughs> What they care about are the treats they get or the toy they get when they are, are in odor. So when you're starting nose work and um, with a dog, once when you're assigning odor value, you usually have them have their nose, what we call a food troughing them, where you, their nose goes in where the odor is and you literally are throwing treats into that box over and over again. They don't need it to be super strong for them to find it. They just need us to assign it a value. So why we train at different strengths is different organizations use different strengths. And so it's good to teach your dog that that odor, even though it smells really faint or really strong, it's the same odor. So by training at different strength levels, you're teaching that it still has value to them. Did that make sense? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Anna, am I missing anything yet? No, no, you're good. <laughs> okay. Okay. Um, so equipment that we use, similar to tracking, most people put their dogs in a harness. This is a Comfort Flex. I start. That's my original partner, Bray. Um, and like anything, you tend to end up being color coordinated. She was my pink dog. Uh, Eliza's now my purple dog. She'll be all decked out in purple. Um, <laughs> it's really sad. So um, I wouldn't use a Comfort Flex harness any longer. I find it cuts on their shoulders. So uh, try and get a Y harness if you decide to go with a harness. The reason why we like harnesses is it's coming from their back. It keeps the, the leash out of their way when they're working. You can get distance from your dog, especially us that have big dogs. You really want to give space so that you can see what's going on. If you're too close, you can't see what your dog is doing. Um, and then you can wear on a collar. It, they can't have tags. It can't have prongs. It can't be adversive. 
Um, so this was my dog's uh, trialing collar and it was all of daisies. So it was a paracord collar of daisies. And the dogs soon learn, learn just like tracking that when those pieces of equipment come out, that means that it, we're gonna go and play. Now, uh, one thing, um, do you wanna talk about the lead you're using here? Sure. This is so a specific this is, lead. This is a, a biothern lead. It's uh, I use a ten foot leash, but you can use an eight foot leash. Um, my husband's up to a twenty foot with exteriors with his dog because he's doing very large spaces, and so he wants to give his dog as much freedom as possible when he's working his dog. Um, so anywhere six feet. Once again, you're pretty much standing on top of your dog. Um, and we're always talking about getting back. The other thing is when you're first learning nose work, most instructors will have you running off leash in, in interior spaces. And the reason why you're running off leash is so that you can actually be back and away from your dog and learning what your dog looks like on odor. And you'll hear your instructor go, did you see that? Did you see that? And you're gonna go, what, what, what am I looking for? So, um you want to stand back and you also want to be in a class where you don't the dogs are housed in the cars or in crated mm -hmm. elsewhere so that you can sit and watch other people run their dogs mm -hmm. uh, it's a safety factor because dogs when they're working can get grumpy and with other dogs and the other piece is you can't take the time to learn what you're supposed to learn if you're too busy fussing with your own dog. So you're, if you're in class, you wanna make sure you're in a class with the dogs not in class with you at all at the same time. Uh, it's, it allows you the freedom to learn from everybody else's dogs because a dog will look very similar. Dogs work differently and have different preferences, but when they are in odor, when they find that scent and that tin, they all look the same, which is usually a head moving very quickly, walking past, and then them, their brain catching up to their nose. That happens quite often, especially at the beginning where their, their brain hasn't caught up to their nose. The no, nose figured out where it is and it turns, they'll keep going, and then all of a sudden, oh right, it's back there, and then they'll turn around and go straight at it. Um, odor works in, um, in a cone shape, so in a triangle shape, quite frankly, quite often. So what you'll find is the dogs working the fringes of the cone and trying to find the edges of the cone so they can work their way back to what we call source. Okay. Um, so this is an example of the different types of searches. So the top left is a container search. Um, and you'll find that a lot of organizations, their competitions tend to be at schools. And so there's a lot of trials are getting, were getting canceled because of lack of places to play. Um, so dogs have to get used to being in different types of environments uh, and being able to go on to different type of floors. So lots of dogs struggle going into gyms where it's really shiny floor. And you notice I give her lots of space to work. Um, the top right is an exterior search. Actually, that's an interior search. Sorry, it was at a high school and we were working lockers. Um, and then the top or the bottom left is an exterior search. The, her nose is actually right on where the source was. So it was actually in a drain. And then um, vehicle searches, which like I said, my favorites. I just think it's so cool that they can walk around a vehicle and find it. So, any questions so far? No? Okay. And then. I'm sorry, it took me a minute to unmute. Actually, Joel has a question. He would like to know, do you give the dog the scent prior to the game and then begin? So tell us a little bit more about the, the uh, warm-up boxes. That'll answer his question. It's always going to have the same scent. Like if you're doing a level one, it's going to be birch for NACSW. And they're trained, the dog is basically trained to only look for maybe birch at that time. So no matter where, um, where, where the trial is, it's always going to be birch. 
and in, it could be in any kind of a cardboard box. I end up using um, United States postal boxes a lot because they're the perfect size to put the, the tin in and just put like 12 containers on the floor um, for them to work on it. So, but it will, they won't get, it's not going to change to different ones. I think you're thinking also, Joel, about um, tracking where it's, it's going to be whoever you laid the track, <laughs> the scent of that person is. So it's totally different. And I think that's what kind of freaked out Portia um, when we started tracking is she was looking for a scent and she couldn't, you know, she was confused because uh, she kept moving along going, wait a minute. Where am I going? These treats are leading somewhere, but it's not what she's supposed to be doing. So she got confused. <laughs> so all the doggies start looking for birch first. Well, and then yeah. Mm -hmm. Organization, then it goes from there. Then it's like two different scents, and then it goes up to three, and that's where it starts varying depending on what organization. Mm -hmm. So can you back the video up, Lindsay? Showing a, a dog working sent working containers or boxes. There we go. Sorry about that, Lindsay. I. I interrupted the start of your video. I did. I apologize for that. Okay. Can anyone hear me? Yes. Hear us? Now I can. I couldn't hear you for the longest time. I can hear you, but we. You, your screen, we don't see your screen right now, so we need you to go back to your screen share when you're ready. Weird. I took it down. There we go. Yeah. Now we see it again. So we're on your first slide right now. Yeah, I'm scrolling down. Well, did you see the video of her working? Yeah, but we were talking over it. I apologize for that. So yeah, I don't care about that. I was totally fine with that. So I saw wanna, Anna showing the boxes. Yeah, if you want to narrate that, that video for us, that would be great. So basically, it was just her working. When she stopped at the door, um, we had, that's where the treats were being kept, was in the bathroom there. And so her nose is so good that she knew, she wasn't in the room when my husband put out the treats, but she knew that the treats were in the bathroom. So she stood there and waited, and I had to kick a box to get her going again to actually search the boxes again. So that's basically where you start with nose work with dogs. It's just simple box searches, and then we build from there. Mm -hmm. um, but the main part is really at the beginning, building confidence so that they want to play the game. Um, I took her to one of our classes the other day, and she didn't want to leave the room. She actually put her, you know, put the skid marks on, I'm not going. So, um, and I'm not introducing odor to her until she's a year. She's gonna stay on treats for, uh, until, for another, how many months now? Eight, eight months now, mm -hmm. seven months. So uh, I'm not in any hurry to get her to competition. Um, what to me, nose work is about playing the game, not about competition, so. <laughs> Say that again, Carmen. Yeah. When they signal to say, here's the order, does it have to be a set or can it be a variation of that? Okay, Anna, did you hear her? No, I didn't understand what she said. It's all. It was all a little bit garbled, but I think what she's asking is if you could please explain um, the alert and how your dog tells you that they're on the scent. Is that right, Carmen? Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. What I said. 
Well, you have, okay, I can show you what they told us to do. We started a little different. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, we started just a little different at our club um, and training is where they had the scent club birch in, in the hide inside the container. And, um, and then you had a treat right by where the, it was. Yeah. And that the minute the dog came, sniffed the treat and to connect the treat with the hide and to feed more treats, right? You know, just bring yes. it right to their nose down there. That was their to do it that way, then eventually the treats disappear and they just find that hide. And it's kind of up to you and the dog how you decide to do alert. You must yell alert um, out loud in, in order, you know, for a yes or a no from the judge. Um, and my, I taught Portia to look at me. Um, I know they're okay with the dog. Sometimes dogs like will jump up and down or something. And as long as the the person handling the dog knows what the the dog if the dog found it you're good with that at least that's what i was told so that's, that's how we learned too so we immediately treated at source and then and with ellie ellie would just like give you the slightest little head turn and look and then the better she got at it she would just give you a side eye like just kind of look at you so you had to really be concentrating on her head to make sure that you caught that little tiny head turn. So she, some dogs like will paw at the box or will put yeah. their foot on the box. Or jump on it, you know, and break the box. <laughs> no, you don't want that. That's you don't bad. want it, but, lose marks. But Ellie, <laughs> yeah, they do try it. That, that's called yeah. destructive behavior. Um, both my, our competition dogs were trained with a freeze. So our dogs, when they hit odor, actually freeze at source. I know some people who have trained sits or downs. Really what you want is most dogs and like Anna's dog, where you start with is they hit source, they look at you because what they're looking for is their treat. I found source, give me my treat. I found, the, I found your odor, give me a treat. So Joel, you, you asked if they get sent prior to the game. You teach them the scent. The game is all about, it's not like tracking where you give them the scent and then they have to go find that scent. Mm -hmm. oh, um, nose work is more like um, bomb and drug dogs or mm -hmm. cadaver dogs where you've taught them what that smell is. We've rewarded for that smell. So they can walk into any building and find that smell because mm -hmm. we've actually assigned that smell um, We've assigned it value by giving them treats constantly. And what Anna was talking about, where it's called pairing, and I still do it with all, our, even our elite dogs. We pair with our elite dogs just to keep things tuned up, where it's instant gratification. By having that treat next to the odor when they find it, they get instant gratification by finding it because we're too slow to reward them fast enough. So what you'll hear from your instructor is reward now, reward now, <laughs> quick, quick. We yeah. want to get them rewards quickly at the beginning. And then as they get better at it, you don't have to hurry as much because yeah. they know they're going to get the reward. Yeah. They're, they're, you're trying to make that connection between the odor and, yes. you know, and the reward so that they're, that's what they're really looking for, not just the treat. <laughs> yes. And that's called odor obedience. Mm -hmm. um, I was at a trial this past weekend. I was doing all the uh, hiding, all the hides for all the levels. And we watched, it was a well, Irish Springer Spaniel, uh, Irish Spaniel. He was sweet, but we watched him track. We didn't watch him actually do nose work. What we watched him do was track where all the other dogs had been. <laughs> And, and then and then he go oh okay the, it's here because all the other dogs stopped here, mm -hmm. and one hour of our container searches was in a circle, and he literally walked in the circle around all the the containers over and over and over again because he couldn't figure out where the other dogs had stopped. Um, that's so funny. to me, he doesn't understand what nose work is. He's tracking. He was doing it beautifully, <laughs> but he wasn't he wasn't playing the game. So. Um, if I was his instructor, I would be going back to doing open containers where he has to get instant gratification for that nose, for the odor. Mm -hmm. So, 
but the basics is really a lot of container work and uh, we try and make it as exciting as possible. Mm -hmm. um, I do a lot of uh, maze work with my dogs, persistence works. So I'll put poor Eliza, she has her dinner and her breakfast in a maze of X pens every morning and every evening. And she has to figure out how to get to her food. So that I'm teaching her persistence and how to solve puzzles because nose work really is a lot of puzzle solving mm -hmm. for the dogs. Mm -hmm. How do I get there? How do I get to that spot? Yeah. Um, I, I notice after like on the third year, and I've only worked with Portia for three years, that she started using her nose to um, sticking her nose in the air, trying to catch it, the scent where it was coming from. Yeah, and then going in the right direction. And um, the trainer was kind of surprised because most dogs don't use the air to track or to look um, for a scent. I don't know if that's true. If the if the odor's up in the, up high, then mm -hmm. they're going to air scent because that's where the odor is. So if you're working three and four foot high hides, and we do a lot of suspended hides just because it's a fun thing to do with dogs, mm -hmm. um, they have to get their noses up. If a, a, a hide is on a wall, they have to work that, that they have to get their noses up. Yeah. The other time is when you get higher into levels, you get what's called blank rooms. So there is no odor in a room and the dog has to be able to walk in and go, there's nothing there. And what you'll see is a lot of dogs air scent. They'll walk into the room and you'll see their noses go high. Once they've done an initial um, round of rooms and realize there's nothing there, all of a sudden their noses will go up into the air and then they'll head to the door because they know there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. um, the big thing with nose work is, and the big thing I always notice with people is, we're not in charge in nose work, the dog is. Mm -hmm. If you walk into a room thinking you're in charge, you're not gonna be successful. I watched this weekend people who were new to the game and let their dogs work, and it was so much fun to watch them as a team. And I watched people who were at a high level manhandle their dog through a search and weren't successful because they, the handler started editing out areas of the search area and that's where the, the hide was and they wouldn't let their dog go there. So as you learn as you go along, when you be the teamwork aspect and that's the beauty mm -hmm. of nose work is there is an amazing connection and teamwork with your dog. Yeah. Um, so, and I think it's one of the few sports that you get that kind of connection with, um, where it's, it's so team, de team oriented, and mm -hmm. team dependent. Uh. I'm going to add something to that too. One of the things I liked it about it is instead of the dog, me telling the dog what to do, the dog was telling me what to do. Like, yes as opposed to obedience and confirmation and that kind of thing, where you're the leader with scent work and tracking, the dog is the leader. So I, I thought that was really cool, especially with an otter hound. Yeah, so I I'm saw looking the, forward to that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I found that too. We, we were starting a class and Portia was bored in the class and she was just barking and she didn't want to pay any attention and then the trainer in the class said, you know what, this is not your class for that dog. She needs something different. Why don't you try nose work? And she's done, she's done very well because she can do her thing. And she, it's all about, and it's my job, you're right, just to watch the behavior, where she goes, and if she might pass it up, she may come back again. Or if she misses it and you know where it is for a practice run, um, you know, if she comes back, you know, she's doing the right thing. So sometimes it takes a while. They take, they go back and then they realize they got to come back again, or we got to go through the whole area one more time too. So, but it's really, it's neat because they have control and they like that too. So. I find the drivier the dog is, the better they are in some respects and driving, not in the necessarily the sense of, pulling you off your feet. Although I have seen some really brilliant, I've seen a lot of dogs go to rally obedience and they fail out of rally obedience really badly. And then they come into nose work and we, we're all excited to see them yeah. because mm -hmm. that the dog is then in their element. Um, whereas in rally obedience, they're, they're have a little bit too much personality, I guess. 
don't know. Yeah. And I do rally, by the way, I do rally with our other dog who is elite level dog. So, um, and nose work. And, uh, That's one of the cool things about nose work though, is some of the dogs that are, have personality traits that make regular obedience difficult for them, excel at, at nose work and the whole uh, nose work is kind of geared a lot around dogs that might have those those kind of issues where it's not you don't have dogs going nose to nose or you have dogs that are separate and they cater to dogs that have um, like maybe stress issues or aggressive issues or stuff like that they mm -hmm. really address that from the very beginning in uh, scent detection which is nice yeah yeah, that was nice because some dogs are reactive and they just can't even get focused if they're reactive. But here, that dog is in that room with you and then your trainer and that's it. And that makes it kind of nice because it's just more relaxing for them too. They're, you know, and they're not, they're not distracted by another dog jumping around or not behaving or whatever. So they're, they sit in your car and they wait and they get used to that. You know, they know when mom comes to the car, it's time to do our things. <laughs> Well, one of the big things with it is it's and I always stress to my students is this is a confidence builder I'm working on building your dog's confidence so from week to week to week I'm building exercises that we started off last week with my more advanced group we were doing what's called inaccessible hides which means the dog actually can't get to odor and so I started the first exercise with was with a chair with the hide with the tin, right? Smack dab, they could see it, the dog could get right, right to it. And then we rewarded them. And then I put the chair in the middle of an X-pen. And then they could still see that that's where the tin was, but then they had to make a decision, when, when do I ask for my reward? Mm -hmm. So them teaching the dog to make a decision. And the, 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 watching the dog from the first exercise to the second exercise to the third exercise, when you put them away and let them think, go to the car, it's interesting because they actually are thinking about how could I get to that treat a little bit faster? Mm -hmm. So that's one of the things that you find is they, they're thinking about what's happening to them and then they come back in and they're just that much better because they've already, they know what that experience was. Now, how can I move it better? Mm -hmm. so. And it's good for dogs at any age. We had um, some lady with miniature collies start her dogs at like 10 years old and these dogs were doing it and it was amazing. And then they, they had any dog can do it if they have an interest in smelling things and most dogs do. So it was nice. And I think the fact that people can come in and they don't have to have a purebred, they can come there and their dog, as long as the dog is learning and willing to work, you know, they can get some, you know, confidence level that, you know, on any dog. So that's what's so great about it, too. I really liked to see. And I think there will be a trend now with people want to do more with their pets. They just don't want to go to the park, throw a ball. They want to do and learn from their dog. And then they and the dog try to communicate with them. And, you know, so that's that's really important, I think, and continue the trend. Well, for those of us that are where do you find the kits the scent kits so um you can buy them on amazon yeah mm -hmm. um, a, but just google um scent kits for akc or nacs double there's one that I just bought from Pennsylvania. It's called K9 NW Source. In oh, Glenmore, okay. She's, but she's the official one for, that's Amy. Oh. She's the official for NACSW. Yeah. Okay. So she does all the hides. She does all the kits for what they call a CO, um, certified official for uh, NACSW. So yeah. that's good stuff you got there on there. <laughs> yeah. Good to know. <laughs> but um, yeah. the other thing is, if you have a really good instructor, we'll give you your first kit. Yeah, that's so, true. Um, there are other, I mean, you can go on Fenzy. Fenzy offers classes. Um, and there's different ways of starting. I start on primary. I am a firm believer of starting with treats, just teaching the game with treats, building confidence with treats. And that's actually what happens to police 
and the police dogs and the military dogs, they're started at puppies on treats and they, that's what they do with them. They take them through everything on treats. Um, but there are lots of people who don't start on treats and goes directly to odor and their dogs do just fine. Yeah. Um, and, you're, and you're not act when you say when she says give them lots of treats and all that you have like maybe six boxes out and yeah. one hit one you might have the treat in and yep. then the others are empty so that's how you start them you don't put a treat in each box <laughs> no i actually start with four boxes oh you do okay, cool. I, okay. I start with even less and i want let them see me put the treat in the box Oh, okay. put the box down so they can, I make it that easy for them. Oh, wow. Okay. That's not, especially with the really anxious dogs because coming yeah. into the building, coming into a classroom, coming with all sorts of different people and different smells. I work in a, um, we work out of a space that actually uh, is called the all things dog room mm -hmm. and it has obedience classes in there, rally classes in there, um, regular dog, you know, it has all sorts of class, plus us. Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of dog smell. Um, yeah. All the poles in there, I think, have been peed on at least once. Yeah, So true. for them to come in and we're expecting them to pay attention, mm -hmm. I make it that easy for them. Mm -hmm. And then build wow. from there because yeah. it's, and there's mirrors on the wall Last week, one of the dogs discovered himself in the mirror, and it was the best thing because then he just bounced around <laughs> looking at himself in the mirror. And we just thought it was grand. We were yeah. telling ourselves laughing. But, you know, those are the things that they have to work through. Yeah. The military and, the, and the, the, um, the police dogs, they don't have to work through that because they're trained from, basically, they're picked up very, yeah. like, they're and selected. started immediately. Yeah. Mm -hmm, yeah. And they're got, they're, they are picked up specifically for those things. Mm -hmm. And Carmen, this kit's like $20. Yeah. I mean, it's, so cheap. it's not like it's going to cost you $200 to get started on something like no. that. And you can even get the stuff like individually, like on Amazon. I was, um, I learned online with um, Denise Fenzi mm -hmm. and I just took uh, a, in the, a, just a basic course and I got like the tins on Amazon. I got my first bottle of oil at Amazon and then went from there and then once I discovered that she really liked it then I got an actual kit that came in a little pelican case that was you know airtight and then got the other oils and then more tins and straws and stuff like that um, and you've got there's magnets where you can like mm -hmm. uh, stick those tins to something metal there's a little uh, there's all kinds of gizmos and gadgets um, like earthquake tape where you can like stick it to something um, electrical, what do you call that? Oh, where's my husband? What do you call the electrical stuff that you use the hairdryer to shrink it? Prop. What do you call it? Prop. Prop. Um, that stuff. So it's, it, that kind of stuff is really cool. And I'm going to apologize to you, Anna. So I have not really introduced you yet to the group. So Anna, um, I'm going to take this moment to have you tell us a little bit about you and, um, your, how you got started and all of that because we kind of missed that <laughs> well actually I, I we discovered otter hounds at a dog show in Chicago at the McCormick place um, it was Jason actually showing I think it was Patron at the time I'm not even sure and we just and there was only one dog I mean and it was we thought this is we just like this dog and his mannerism just by watching him in the ring and we went to talk to Andy and Jason um, about the breed and everything and then she said to get a hold of the breeder referrals. And at the time, this is maybe 10, 15 years ago, we couldn't find anyone that there were just hard to find. So we, we kept, I mean, for years, I think I must've talked to everybody. Um, even Arlene for hours on the phone <laughs> about otter hounds and, and that. So we just ended up, but we finally got a hold of Four Pillars and we got Porsche. We started there five years ago. And um, at first, I just was looking at for a pet. I mean, I had not thought of anything besides just having a pet. And then she says, well, you can do confirmation show too. <laughs> show her. And I'm going, what? And she says, yeah, you just take these classes and you learn how to show. I'm going, really? That's all it you know, takes? And, well, it's, it's a little bit more than that. But um, so this started like five years ago where I um, just started 
you know, taking classes and going to practices on confirmation. And this is, this is a lot of fun. And then I um, was taking puppy classes at the time too. And they offered classes with nose work and obedience and agility. But I was, um, I actually was going to try to get the C, um, the canine good citizen first, but Portia was tired of sitting still for a very long time. And she was only a year old. And it's like, okay. And the trainer said, get her into something where she's more independent. She's too smart. She's bored out of her mind, you know, taking this class. You need something where she can do the work, not you telling her what to do. And um, so I, that's how I started. And they just happened to have this class. And I said, I'll be, I'll be back on Sunday. So um, we got started on that. And I saw her interest was a lot more than, you know, being taught what to do for puppies. Go like sit, stay, stand, you know, come. And um, so I started, that's how I got started. And I, and I actually enjoy now, I just love confirmation. I first was a nervous wreck, like everybody else who first starts it, but um, I'm feeling more confident and I've learned so much coming to some shows and, and seeing how people, you know, watching people and all that. And, uh, and then just doing the nose work with Portia. And now I will do tracking with Bentley just to do some variety and um, see how that goes. But I, Kind of want to get him trained but it's been such a crazy you know time this year has been just awful for this poor pup that uh, you know when you want to get him and you can't because no one's doing classes or very restricted so but anyways but that's how i got started um and portia is an independent thinker i mean she doesn't really care about other dogs and she just wants to do her thing so um i'm just trying to think of some other you know i started with nacsw only because those are the ones that were teaching, that's what they were teaching in the area. So, so that's, that's how I got started. And I've only been doing it for three years. So it's not that long, <laughs> but I, I got a ways to go. <laughs> I think of the different organizations that kind of is key. It doesn't really, what you have in your area is the best place to start. Cause yeah. if you don't have, um, you know, one of the others, if you don't have UKC or AKC or CKC and that, but there is a um, another organization. There's nothing wrong with that. Go with what's in your area where they're teaching yeah. a class, or go to a scent marker, scent detection class, and they will point you in the right direction in where there's trials in your area. Um, we have a training uh, facility here. It's actually where we've trialed, and they have uh, all different kinds of scent detection classes and nose work and stuff like that. I never knew that until I trialed there. Um, mm -hmm. but, and they do, um, I think different, I think they do different, um, stuff there. I just, I don't know. I've only done an AKC trial. Um, but don't be afraid to check that out. And, uh, it's easy to do when, especially, well, it's not easy to do with some breeds. Some breeds are like, yeah, no, I have no desire to do that. Like a black Russian. Um, but otter hounds they they're all about their nose so the, they make it very easy for you um lindsay what other breeds have you done it with you said you had some mixed breeds that you tried it with how does that compare to an otter hound so um yeah so bray who was my first competition dog was a lab sharpe greyhound border collie cross so a true mutt and that's the pictures of that that was the pictures of her and um so she's very linear. She did exterior, she would do the perimeter of her room and then work her way through. She was very slow moving, very deliberate moving. Um, and, and like I said, different dogs work differently. Um, Eliza, from what I can see, she's actually brilliant at it. Um, I haven't even taught her things like threshold hides and she's catching them already. Mm. She is screaming screaming before she walks in and then as soon as she walks into the search area quiet as quiet and you hear her she's just all about working so the excitement level with her is absolutely through the roof actually so you were talking about scent kits so i have a problem and this is my this is my scent kit <laughs> oh whoa <laughs> So you know I have a, a scent work problem. <laughs> um, I brought it out and Eliza got up and her tail was wagging. She's not on odor yet, but she knows what that means. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> actually, she probably is on odor whether I want her to be or not because she mm -hmm. knows what that means. Mm -hmm. um, 
but she she like i said from what i've seen of her so far she's very detailed oriented she works spaces beautifully and i don't have to keep track of her she just does it um i've watched dog which is a lab dane cross he is uh object fixated so it doesn't matter how much we work on on covering the areas he will actually check out each object first and then go back um, you have some dogs which are catalogers and it could be uh, within a breed you could have i know someone who, who has a black lab and she's a catalogger and what she does is she goes and finds all the hides and then comes back and tells her handler where everything is she just wants to make sure she knows where everything is before she tells people um, <laughs> Schnauzers and terriers tend to work in circles, so you find that the handlers are going around in circles constantly because that's how they work their odor. Um, so I've seen all sorts of ways. You find some dogs will decide to pick off all the really easy puzzles first and then pick the really hard and then do the hard one last. And then you have some dogs that insist upon doing that hard one first, but they know where all the easy ones are. So they get the hard one done and then they go boom, boom, I'm done. So it's, um, it's preference and personality. Mm -hmm. And that's after watching a lot of dogs. How do you know when your dog knows where the scent is or what, yeah, so what like they're on the scent? Right. Like how frequently would you switch that out? So you're, you're not going to move on really. You're not going to add scents until you know your dog understands that scent. And then you add the next scent. Mm -hmm. And that would be, <coughs> excuse me, an easy one is container searches. You put out 10 boxes with one Hot, with one having odor in it and you just put boxes with holes in the top and they'll go and search all the boxes and put, put their nose on the right one consistently and you can move that box around amongst all the other boxes and they'll constantly going back to that one box you know your dog knows what odor they're on mm -hmm. and then i would add an odor you're, you're muted. You're really proficient at the first odor before you ever add a second one. Yeah. And depending on where you're, where you're trialing, um, the the next level up can be just the first order odor or a second odor. You have no idea. And like the third level up, it could be three of the first odor or three of the third odor or one of each. You have no idea. So you really want to make sure that you have your dog really, really proficient in the first order odor before you ever start the second odor. And then really proficient in both of those before you add a third and really proficient in all three of those before you ever add a fourth. Otherwise, they get confused and you get confused because you don't know if they really smelled it or if they smelled something different. And that, um, Carmen, too, you don't know, as the person coming in, you do not know at all where those hides are. Because you could say alert, and it could be a false alert, meaning there's no odor in that, so you're out. Um, you know, you don't, you, you didn't make it. <laughs> but so you, yeah, you have to realize, too, you have no idea where these are, so that's why you have to really trust your dog. Yes, and that, that is a saying, trust your dog. Mm -hmm. It's different. It's a lot more different. But um, the is kind of slow, but it's not actually the real thing. But do they like lay a for your dog? They're still really garbled. I'm not sure. So I know you're talking about um, barn hunt and rats and that smell, but I didn't get the last part of your um, question. Right. But, uh, can you guys see what I'm saying right now? A little bit. Uh, can they, do they have a false sense? 
or can they cut you off? No, um, in later on, um, in like handler discrimination, um, they do have like somebody other than the handler has a sock in the box. Like usually the judge has a sock that smells like the judge in one of the boxes. And so the dog has to pick between mommy's sock and the judge's sock. And that are distractors. So at oh, level yeah. two and three, um, you can have food or toy distractors. So AKC is toy at level two and level three is food or, or toy. toy. Yep. Yeah. Um, NACSW, it's food and it could be mm -hmm. anything. And it usually is the CO's breakfast. Yeah. So or had distractors where it's been scrambled eggs, yeah. peanut butter, and a piece of toast. No, I have gone in for practice where she has left a slice of pizza in a pizza box on the floor and the dog was supposed to walk by it and find the scent. And believe me, there were a lot of dogs that couldn't do it. <laughs> for a hot dog, they make it hard. <laughs> yes, they do. They do. The thing is... But the thing is, what the dogs learn is, and what I do is, I put the, so I'm mean. <laughs> I will put the distractor out. It could be tripe, it could be a hot dog, it could be whatever, in a box, and I'll put odor out. And what I do is, if they choose the odor, they get fed what's in the box. So I also have a hot dog <laughs> in my pouch. So that they learn that odor pays them what's in the box. Odor is what pays, not not the other, not the smell of the treat, but odor is what gets you what you want. Hamburger that's in the box, so you never just open that box and say, "Here, hamburger." No, 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 no. I have ha another pouch of hamburger for the right one. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. You know, also um, when you start practicing at home, a lot of people go to their basement or they go outside if the weather's nice and they do it. But we had a trainer that said she would take her hide with a magnet and go to like Home Depot mm -hmm. and put it on one of the metal bars or the racks. And then she'd go and get her dog, bring her dog in and just walk around and see if the dog could find the scent amongst everything else. There. I mean, she was quite creative of all the places she would go. <laughs> and that makes it kind of interesting too for you and the dog to see if she can find those things. But I was pretty, it's, it's a, you, cause after a while you, you have the boxes in your basement, the dog's gonna go, yeah, this is boring. You need, you need they need to be stimulated too, so. But they're all places you can go to, to try to practice on scent work. I did that with Ellie and I would hide it like in the lumber area, like one Q-tip in a straw in the lumber area and one on a shelf you know, with the magnet and like yeah. literally all over the Home Depot um, or have my husband do it so she didn't follow my scent mm -hmm. um, and outdoors like in the crack of a fence and you know on top of the post and stuff like that so as you um, go through the different levels your heights can get higher and higher and your area gets further and further apart so not only do you end up having more more sense but you also have bigger distance higher heights and it so that part gets higher, harder and harder too so the more you practice with that kind of real life mm -hmm. stuff like at home depot whether at the library or at the park or mm -hmm. at your neighbor's house the yeah vehicles you, vehicles too i mean porsche looks at cars differently now <laughs> because you take you know one of the the hides and put it even in the wheel well or someplace and that dog is looking all over the cars for those things so when we moved to our current house, we used to live in Vancouver and we moved to the island and we were a month between houses. So we put everything into storage and we took our kids across country. We did this through the States on the way out and came back to Canada. And one thing that's really great about nose work is it tires the dog's brains out. Mm -hmm. They're exhausted at the end. So our, we would get to the hotel room and we would set up hides. So our dogs did nose work all the way across the States. We went to Ontario. So all the way to Niagara Falls and then all the way back. <laughs> and that's kind of how they got really, I mean, they got lots of practice in different environments because it would be hotel rooms, it'd be outside a hotel. It would be at my parents' house. It would be 
wherever because mm -hmm. they you just need to tire them out because they'd be in the car all day. So it was a good way of taking them for a walk and then allowing them to do some work. And that's important that they try different places because you don't know where that trial is going to be. They, they have to find an area that is not traveled as much or, you know, it, it doesn't, they try as best, you know, it could be a bowling alley they can get, you know, rent out or I, I we were in, I, we did a lot of schools, tons of schools on a, a Sunday when nobody was there and went through like grade school classrooms where there was fish there in aquariums and, and, and all these distractors and, you know, the dog just had to walk in and figure it out. So it was pretty cool. We were in a, a Masonic temple on the weekend. <laughs> There you go. I didn't think of that one. <laughs> yeah. and, and then our exteriors were all in a, um, um, a, a, um, a place where they sell car, car, car dealership. Mm -hmm. That's where all the exteriors were. We're in a car oh, dealership. Awesome. <laughs> Can you imagine yeah. writing something that's real well in a car dealership? Well, <laughs> we, were, we were where the new cars were. <laughs> and the dogs are amazing. They yeah. can a long ways away and it depends when you're outside it depends on which way the wind is blowing because it it takes them you know and you have no idea where it is and so they start leading you and you're you're sure that that's not where it is but you think okay no trust the dog and you trust the dog and you watch her and she goes right to it and you're like how on earth did you do that and she says Cause you're an otter hound Mm -hmm. They're crazy good at it. It's really, really fun. It, yeah, it is. And like I said, we got an otter hound to play this game. Because <laughs> we were already playing this game with our other dogs. Now, now we up the ante. And that's what you find with a lot of people is that people get involved. There are a lot of pointers that do nose work. So a lot of labs that do nose work. And so people end up starting the game with their regular dog. And then they fall in love with the game and then they start looking for a competition dog. So, but my favorite dog this last weekend that I watched work was a Pekingese. She stole the show. The look on her face, wow. when she found odor was, give me my bleeping treat now. <laughs> <laughs> the attitude, it was awesome to watch the, the little pe it, saunter around and then, and then it's here now so but she's she stole my heart this weekend so um <laughs> that's cool does anybody have any questions joel bev joanne terry steve do you guys have any questions at all if so feel free to use the chat or unmute your microphone and ask too either way is fine you have a bunch of uh, nose work geeks here <laughs> I know. um it doesn't look like they have any other questions. Joel, do you have any questions? No. <laughs> Did we overwhelm you with our geekiness? No, no. It, uh, you know, Miracle is going to be eight. And, so she can play. You know, she, uh, she's always got her nose to the ground. And, mm -hmm. and I was just thinking about things to, to challenge her, continually to challenge her. And it just, I, I didn't know anything about it. So I wanted to learn from the experts, mm -hmm. at least get the information. Because there is a place in Grand Rapids that has classes that I thought, you know, it'd be fun to do mm -hmm. something else. And yep. I'm definitely starting with things as ordering with And it's amazing how it tires them out. Um, yeah. like they literally, it's like they just ran a marathon. If you've, you know, if they've worked hard at it, they're like exhausted. And that, that part is amazing how much the mental activity tires them out. Well, the interesting thing is dogs noses, they have three to four times the neuron receptors in their nose than we do. And when they're actually sniffing, their body, core body temperature actually rises five degrees. So um, physiologically, it takes a lot out of them to actually work. That's mm -hmm. why they work them in short spurts. Oh, yeah, I have a question. Go ahead, Carmen. Um, so do we return to I didn't catch that. Yeah, I didn't either. Feel free to chat it. 
Put it in chat. Put it in chat. Type it. Okay, Bev, you had a question though. I, yeah, I'm sorry I missed the first 10 minutes because it's like meal time here. It's five o'clock here in Calgary. So it's always hard time for me to start. So can you go through a little bit quickly what the first few minutes were? Um, sure. I, yeah, I was confused when I came in. So the first few minutes was talking about the different organizations that offer the game, offer nose work. In Calgary, um, you have the SDDA. Joanne and Terry want to watch this. Okay. Um, in, in Calgary, you have uh, the SDDA, which is the Canadian version, and you have CKC. I know they're both work being run in uh, Calgary. Um, and then also, I went through the different odors that, that we start with. In Canada, it's wintergreen is your first starting odor, mm -hmm. not birch. Americans start with birch. Canadians mm -hmm. go pine, thyme, and depending on the organization, whether it's thyme or uh, anise. Okay. Okay, so I, I'm not working, and I'm apparently not going back until January. So classes are limited here. Is there anything I can do to start on my own? I can tell you two, um, two instructors there. Okay, shoot. Well, Barbara, let me, hold on, where's my phone? Oh. While she's doing that, there's also online courses too. So um, I taught, we were totally self-taught, Ellie and I, with, we took two online courses um, that we just audited. We didn't, uh, there's, there's courses where you can like submit a video and have it um, critiqued and, learn that way or that you can just audit and you can watch the, the instructor and watch like some of the other students videos. Um, but that's how Ellie and I learned and we, we got our um, container title our first trial and we got uh, two legs of our three legs required on interiors and that was when she was only eight months old. So, so Barbara Walmer, who is a uh, good as gold training. Hold on, Walmer, W-A-L-M-E-R. And where is she again? She's Calgary. I know, good as gold? Good as gold. Okay. And she also has a Karen Pryor Academy background as well. Okay. And then um, there's another one too. Uh, Shannon is also out your way as well. Shannon. Uh, Shanna Ch Chin Chinoweth. Spell that? So Shanna is S-H-A-N-N-A, -N -N -A, and her last name is Chinoweth, C-H-Y-N-O-W-E-T-H. And she just became a judge with the SDDA. She also is a, uh, a FENZI instructor. And she's also NACSW. So dog gone good dog training is hers. Dog, D-A-W-G, -G, okay. gone good dog training is hers. Yeah, I've heard of dog gone good. So they both do scent work. Um, okay. I'm friends with both of them. I, I train with Barbara, so I know her quite well. Okay. And they're lovely. They're both really lovely people and, and are in it for the right reasons. That's what I need. And really, the big thing with nose work is you and the dog should be having fun. Mm -hmm. It should be, you should be walking out, and I'm sure Anna and Robin will agree with me, you should be walking out of class every week or when you're finished, if you're doing Fenzy online every week going, that was so much fun. And your dog should be going, oh my God, I want to do more. <laughs> that, that leads me to another question. How often do you uh, practice or train? How often do you do it, Anna? <laughs> I train it just, it every day. It depends. Um, sometimes I try to do at least two times a week but because we moved and everything it's just been really hard and I, I'm subbing in the school district which has been really kind of crazy right now with COVID um, but they're still going to school so um, so it's 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 it just depends on you I mean you don't like but you don't need an hour to do it see that's the thing people think that's too much mental stimu stimulation they can't handle that so even 10 minutes Man. Every other day, if you really want to, it depends how much you want to get into it, how much the dog will work with you. You don't want to over someone, the trainer was saying the person was just throwing 20 treats out so the dog would look around for them. And it's like, 
that's too much. That's way over stimulation. And you don't want to go there. You got to take it slow. And it's up to you and the dog what you really want to do. Uh, we, my dogs, because I'm teaching so much, um, they're lucky if they get it three times a week, maybe yeah. twice, depending. Sometimes I take them to class just so that after class is over, everything's set up and then I can run my own dogs. Mm-hmm. Um, that quite often is how they actually get trained is I take them to class and mm-hmm. then they get whatever I've done at class. Um, and then, and try and with Eliza, I try and take her to the classes appropriate to her and, and do go what's appropriate to him. Um, so maybe three times a week. <laughs> yeah. It just depends how much time you want to put into it and how much your dog is willing to, to do it too. And it, it's like, like, you can do it for five minutes if you really want to. Pretty much. And that's all you need. Mm-hmm. We, we did it online. So all, we didn't have a class or anything that we went to. So we would do like one height a day, um, sometimes two, like in the one in the morning and one at night. But that would, we would just, she'd find that height, get her treats and we'd be done. So that takes, you know, two minutes mm-hmm. twice a day. But if we didn't do it, she was going nuts. Like, so you're really helping to bleed out. To the door where I kept her uh, harness and like bonk the door until you would finally give in and get the harness out. Yeah, and that was one thing our trainer said is try to, when you do use a harness, try to use that harness only for that event. For sure. So that, then they realize, oh, we're doing nose work now. And that really helps. You don't take them on walks with that harness or, you know, to a dog show with that harness. You just keep that harness for nose work only. She had a tracking harness too. And we would do, we did tracking at the same time. And she would bonk the closet where the nose work harness lived. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, that was my question. If you wanted to do tracking and nose work, can the dog handle both of them? Yes, Ellie. we can. I, you can. It depends on the dog. Portia just, I tried it with Portia and it, she got confused. She, she, she didn't understand why, you know, you're supposed to turn left and, <laughs> and she, you know, and then she was looking for a specific scent on the ground. It, she, she just was very, or, you know, and it, it, it was just very confusing. So I don't know, maybe I, if I changed the harness, that was my fault. Maybe I should have had a special harness so that I, she relates to one tracking, one scent work. That's okay. I got five to work with. There you go. Pick and choose. There you go. Pick and choose what you want. <laughs> send the ind- send the independent ones to the scent work. <laughs> they will do better. Yeah, <laughs> yeah it really it, it, it scent work is really the dog needs to be able to work independently. Mm-hmm. One of the games with the SCDA is called distance, and the 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 uh, handler has to stand in a box on the ground. And, they, and they're not allowed to leave that space and you send your dog off to find the hide. It's one hide in the, in the room, but you're not allowed, the owner's, the handler's not allowed to leave the space. So it's a game. Um, do you want me to put on uh, Eliza looking for her treat again? Please. Okay. Okay, I'm turning off the volume. You don't need to listen to me talk, or my husband talk, actually. Oops. Sorry. So if you, when you put it back up there, if you'll narrate it for us, so if you'll tell us like what, like what she's doing and when you, where you released her from, and you can see that okay. there's boxes all over. So there's but- boxes all over, yeah. And th- this was filmed for doing our instructor course for NACSW. So we had to challenge our dog to something different. For her, she had always worked boxes on the ground. So by putting it up on the couch, that's where the treat was, that box where on, the, on the, the couch. That's teaching her that the boxes aren't just on the ground. They can be anywhere. And then this is a hallway into my house. So we let her out. And notice that she's working off leash because I want her working independently. Of course, she ran over to say hi to dad before doing anything, which is normal. Um, and so we have some boxes on the side because we want to see her go in. And we have some boxes um, you know, upside down. So just teaching her to get her head into things and into boxes. 
Uh, let's see. At some point, she's figured out that uh, the bathrooms where the treats are being kept. So she's just going to skip and go straight to the treat. <laughs> so she's waiting to be led into the bathroom because she's already figured out that that's the odor that she's working on. <laughs> Smart little cookie. And, um, and you'll see at some point, I moved that box back. I'm going to actually end up kicking a box just to get her focus away from the bathroom and get her working again. So sometimes just kind of adding a, a, a sound, not necessarily telling them, but just kind of redirecting and getting their focus back and notice how she went back to work at that point. And now she's figured out that, oh, look, it's up here. That's where the treat is. So, and then the next one, is her, but the treat's actually on the chair this time. Okay, this is oh, and we don't need to listen to my husband. So she knows up to this point, all her treats have been in the boxes and we have taken it out of the box. I've kept boxes out for context because that's what she knows what to search. So now we're wanting her to search not the boxes, but the things. So, um, and once again, she knows that's where the treats come from, but she moved on much quicker because she didn't get anything last time. She's gone and checked all the boxes and now she's starting to realize, oh, maybe not in a box. And, uh, and then now she's figured out it really is on the chair. So. It's, it's that simple. So she only got two runs total for the entire day, and she was flaked out right after that. So. Okay. Do either of you start with your choice, where you have a treat in one hand and odor in the other hand? That was how we started, where we had um, a scent. Well, first we did it with just a treat. So one hand closed, one hand had a treat, and then she wanted the treat. And she wanted the treat, and then, you know, give, and then we would give her the treat from the other hand. And then we had odor, like a tin in one hand, and then a treat in the other hand, and she only got the treat for going to the odor hand. That was how we started. I think that was the very first thing we did. I mean, I play your choice with her just to get her to calm down at night. And it's just treats. And then if she stays calm with my hand open, I'll reward her with that. But that's a calm down game for her. We play that all the time. But um, boxes and I use colanders as well, where you put the colander underneath and uh, put the bowl and then the colander on top of the, and that's when I'm starting to teach formal box training. That's where I start with is colanders. So I'm starting to teach lines so that they understand they have to work each colander and put their nose in each colander. Oh. Um, really important that you don't put tags on your dogs when they're at doing nose work. Take your, put a collar on that doesn't have tags. Mm -hmm. I had a corgi doing nose work and got the tag caught on a, on a colander actually. And, and that's why I start with treats and not with odor. She never came back. She associated, uh, odor with bad things. So you can actually ruin odor by having a bad experience with it. So that's why we start with treats um, and start with prim what they call primary and building confidence with primary before adding odor. Um, and it was really sad because she was really good. But she got, and I really am firm about no, when I teach no, no uh, tags because I watched it, this, this little corgi terrified it wouldn't go near the colander again it was terrified of it so i don't know any other questions or or anna or Lindsay, did you is there anything that you haven't covered that you want to cover or anything that you want to let people know either like advice or pitfalls to avoid or anything like that um, so it's just that depending upon what you're doing with your dog previous to the starting scent work, like I was, was in confirmation too, and I had to let go of the control 
and say, okay, you, cause the, and the trainer was yelling at me, stop it. You're not in charge. <laughs> I know you got, you're trying to do it in your two minute, you know, time frame and all that to get, you know, it done, but you got to stop that. So you got to remember, you've got to change your whole thinking <laughs> when you're doing something, you know, it's like starting scent work. So you got to learn what they want you to do and try And it's hard because she kept, and I'd hold the leash like I was holding it at a dog show. <laughs> she goes, no, put your hand down. <laughs> oh, you're actually at liberty yet. <laughs> So, yeah, that was me sometimes. It was like, no, she would just say, put your hand down. So it's like, okay. But it was just coming from a different, doing something different and bringing it into nose work when I can't, you have to separate everything. So, yeah, I would say that was for most people is the hardest thing is letting go of control. We are so handler focused on the world that oh, yeah. um, letting the dog have control is really, really, really hard. <laughs> um, and giving your dog space to work. Uh, that's why, like I said, being off leash to begin with is really, it, it, I love working my groups with off leash. Matter of fact, they do the first six weeks off leash. I don't add a leash until about eight weeks in because I want them to watch the dog. I want them to see what their dogs are capable of. I want the dogs to think independently because we're so busy telling them what to do. The dogs have to learn how to be independent. Mm -hmm. I don't think otter hounds have to learn how to be independent. They're pretty independent all on their own. But many dogs have to learn to be independent because we've always been the ones telling them what to do. Mm -hmm. And that's really, really hard for them too. And uh, oh, my husband just walked in the door. <laughs> and so the dogs are up. <laughs> Um, so those would be the big ones. Um, yeah, I mean, and don't ex expectations. Um, don't ex every dog works differently. Every dog looks differently when they work. I sight hounds work very slowly, believe it or not. When they do nose work, they're a very slow moving dog when they do scent work. And I had someone, I had a Beezin in one of our classes who, she was lovely, but the owners didn't come back because they didn't think she was having any fun because she wasn't moving very fast. Mm. So don't equate how fast your dog's moving mm -hmm. to how much fun they're having. If the tail is wagging at the end, oh, hello. If the tail is wagging at the end mm -hmm. and they're wanting to come back, that's what tells you the story. If they can hardly wait to get up into the space of where you're doing nose work, or if you're going to classes and they can hardly wait to go to class, that should tell you everything, not how fast they find it. Because every dog, like every child, is going to do it in their own time. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep. That's good advice. Mm -hmm. If they're bonking the closet door to get the harness, you know they like it. You know they like it. So any other questions? Thank you, everybody. Lindsay, Anna, thank you. Carmen, thank you. Thank you for our participants. I appreciate y'all coming. Um, the next Otter Talk is going to be on October 22nd. I can't believe it's October already. October 22nd, it's going to be at 8 p.m. Eastern time, so one hour later. And it's going to be um, on titers and the immune system. Uh, so rather than vaccinating, titering your dog is another alternative. Um, it's going to be a repeat of the uh, seminar that Joellen Gregory gave at the Pennsylvania National Specialty Show um, by popular demand. Uh, there's been some people that asked for that to be uh, an otter talk and recorded. So that will be the next one on October 22nd. And uh, if there's anything that you guys that are watching are experts on or proficient at or have knowledge that you'd like to share let us know what that is and we'll have you be a panelist for us we appreciate all the knowledge that we can gather from everybody so any other closing remarks carmen anna or lindsay or anybody bev joel <laughs> just try it just see how it works give it a shot have fun with it. It's meant to be fun. Mm -hmm.
a lot of fun. I second that. She said thank you for, for teaching us, and it was nice having you here. From the last video. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, everyone. Welcome. Thanks for coming. Welcome. Thanks for being here, Bev. Your girl did well today. Yay, that's good. Now let's go get a breed. I know, right? <laughs> so, yeah, it was it was Charlie's fault today, I think. The, oh. hammer, the hammer came over and said, he can't watch tomorrow. It's like, I can okay. fix that. It's a man thing. Sorry. <laughs>